a sequel to the 2011 first-person shooter. Rage 2 takes all the post-apocalyptic action of its predecessor and turns the volume up to 11. But can you play this game if you have nothing more than integrated graphics? According to Bethesda, the minimum system requirements are a discrete NVIDIA GTX 780 or AMD R9 280, while the GTX 1070 or AMD Vega 56 is recommended. However, with the right setting changes, you can achieve a very playable 60fps rate on AMD integrated graphics and a modest 30fps with Intel HD graphics. Hi, this is Alex from the Low Spec Gamer, here on Tom's Hardware. Let's see what this game can do. Unlike the first Rage, which was using it engine, Rage 2 uses the Apex engine from Avalanche, which is sadly less modifiable by the user, but still pretty optimized. Started from the settings screen, it is fairly easy to drop most settings to the lowest or to disable them entirely. However, there are two important observations here. The first is not to rely on the automatic settings. At the time of writing, in my experience, it assigns high graphics to anything from integrated Vega GPUs to a GTX 1050 Ti, both of which cannot nearly handle the high settings. The second is to set up the resolution scaler to manual. In theory, the dynamic setting should allow the resolution to change up to a minimum to meet the performance target, but during my test, no changes to the resolution happened during gameplay. Sending it to manual allows you to drop the render resolution by a static percentage and upscales the result to the full render resolution. This can be an extremely useful thing on low-end GPUs. Lucky for us, the minimum resolution scale appears to be almost entirely unlocked in the menu, unlike other games that limit it to 30%, 50%, or 70%. This setting is very powerful, so it should be the first thing to experiment with if you're not getting acceptable performance on lower settings. Let's go to the configuration files and dig a bit deeper. The configuration file for Rage 2 is in the C users username saved games eat software rage2 settings.ini. In the graphical section, a number of variables seems to still be enabled. Of these, texture detail is the only one that caused a measurable difference in performance when I change it. While I could not identify a visual difference in side-by-side -side comparisons, after a lot of testing I did notice a little less VRAM usage when texture detail was set to zero. While this can go unnoticed on dedicated GPUs, integrated GPUs borrow regular slower RAM as VRAM, so increments in RAM speed or decreases in VRAM usage can have a bigger effect. I could not measure or see a difference for water detail or anisotropic filtering, but you can safely reduce these variables to zero without the game having any issues. Interestingly enough, in the game section of the file, there's an interesting option that I did not see reflected anywhere on the settings screen, reduced gore. My first test of this game was an MSI laptop that sports a dedicated GTX 1050 Ti. On the setup, I notice a consistent slowdown when eliminating certain enemies, which reduces them to gory beats all over the floor. Setting Reduce Gore to 1 enables a censored mode of the game that, while not eliminating gore entirely, severely tones down the death of distant enemies and eliminates a lot of the chunks from close ones, which has the added unintentional benefit of helping with those slowdowns. Let's run some tests. The MSI budget gaming laptop with a Core i7, 8 gigs of DDR4 RAM and GTX 1050 Ti with 4 gigs of VRAM is usually enough for the minimum requirements of most games released, and on Rage 2 it manages somewhere around 50 FPS average on regular low settings and full 1080 resolution. If stable 60 FPS is needed, bumping down the resolution scaler to 80% should do the trick. My original target test hardware for this feature was a Ryzen 3 2200G. This AMD EPU with Pega integrated graphics is one of the most powerful integrated GPUs out there. Paired with dual channel 3000 MHz DDR4 RAM on the lowest settings with the texture quality lowered and gore reduced, the game soared on 720p and 50% resolution scale with the averages way over 60 FPS and maintained close to 60 FPS on a 70% resolution scale. That is definitely way better than I expected given my initial results on dedicated GPUs. So I decided to test the viability of this game on something a bit more extreme. The MSI laptop from before pairs the GTX 1050 Ti with an i7-7700HQ, which comes with an integrated Intel HD 630. We can force the game to use that instead of a dedicated GTX card on the NVIDIA control panel. This Intel HD is not 
nearly as powerful as the Vega, and nowhere near the minimum requirements of the game. And yet with a measly 30% resolution scale, 720p, texture reduced and gore disabled, the game is surprisingly able to maintain around 30 FPS in a variety of scenarios, from heavy combat to open world vehicle exploration with relative ease. Is this game playable at such a low resolution? This comes down to design, namely silhouetting and contrast. In games, if a character is designed in such a way that it can be identified just by its silhouette, this usually makes it easier to play on poor resolutions, especially if the visual design of the environments helps these enemies stand out from the background. In the case of Rage 2, the game's silhouetting is not as strong as some other first-person shooters I have played, but it is good enough to make the game playable at low resolutions. Chances are that, if you have access to something in the level of power between this Intel HD and the Vega APU, with some of this knowledge, you might be able to get started with this excellent shooter.